Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Elsie. I'm glad you called. I'll have to skip it tonight, Angel. I got to play spoil sport. Mm -hmm. Some boy I know is looking for fun with a gun, and I want to make sure he doesn't get a big bang out of life. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Weeping Willow. It's late afternoon in New York, and a nervous young man named Joey Willow races down the fourth floor corridor of the Belmont Building. For Joey is in a hurry, and when he comes to a door marked Lester Pharmaceuticals, he barges right in, almost knocking down its sole occupant. Hey, hey take it easy, fella. I'm sorry. You all right? Sure. Hey, you're limping. Well, I have been for seven years. Oh, you're a... You can say it. You must think I'm a jerk. Where's Lester? No, he isn't in. But he told me to meet him here at 12. Well, I guess he was detained. Look, my name is Joey Willow. Did he leave a package for me? No. You sure? I'm positive. Oh, how can you tell? Why don't you look around or something? Well, it wouldn't be any use. What's your name? Al Romano. You work for Les? Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe you can help me out. I need a jolt. A jolt? Yeah. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Look, you don't have to worry. I'm one of Les's old customers. Didn't he ever mention a Joey Willow to you? No. Well, I'm one of the boys. It's all right. Here, maybe this will convince you. What are you rolling up your sleeve for? Yeah. You satisfied now? Let me see that. I told you I was no faker. I gotta have a shot. Well, I'm sorry. I. What do you mean you're sorry? You gotta give me one. I'll take anything. M, C, horse. Look, Joey. I, I tell you, I'm okay. Les knows me. Please, you gotta. You don't know what it feels like. Well, I've got an idea. Oh, I get it. You're trying to hold me up. Well, how much do you want? Look, Joey, you don't understand. No, I... you don't understand. I ran out last night. That's why I called. Oh, Joey. Lester. Oh, am I glad to see you? I was just telling this fellow. I know, I heard you. Wait in my office. But I need a shot right now. I, I said like... wait in my office. You won't be long. Just a couple of minutes. Well, Al? I didn't say anything. No, but you were thinking plenty. Just what a chump I've been. Well, I was real stupid not to see what's going on here. And what is going on? Les, please. Get back in there, will you? Oh, hurry, will you? What are you going to do about him? Well, what would you recommend? That boy is a dope addict. You're kidding. Well, you're not going to get away with this. Who's going to stop me? Maybe me. Listen, Gimpy. You just managed to get by on one leg now. Talk out of turn and you won't have a leg to stand on. Just think it over, Al. You'll see I've got a point there. Who's there? It's only me, Ruthie. What are you doing home? 
I, uh, I quit my job. You what? Yeah. All right, glad to sit down. Now, let me get this straight. You walked out on Lester? Mm-hmm. Why? Because I didn't like the work. Well, now, isn't that just ducky? And since when can a, cr- a man with your handicap be particular? You don't understand, Ruth. You know what I was doing? I was a pusher. A what? A pusher. Those packages I was delivering contained narcotics. So? What do you mean, so? Well, somebody's got to do it. Why shouldn't it be you? I don't know what you're saying. Don't be a fool. Since when can you afford to be fussy? Listen, if you saw this kid that came into the office, it would have broken your heart. You can't imagine what he was going through. Did you ever stop to think what I'm going through? How do you think I feel being married to a man who can't even support me? I know. Nah, you don't. Now, get on that phone and call Lester. Uh-oh. Then what do you intend to do? I was thinking of getting in touch with Mike Waring. What for? Advice. You want advice, I'll give it to you. Call Les and apologize. I won't. It's a dirty, rotten business. It paid the rent. It was blood money. The landlord took it, didn't he? I'm warning you, Al. You go to Waring, we're through. I'll walk right out. You wouldn't. No? Watch! Ruth, come back here. Ruth! Sorry, Mike. I I tried to follow her, but with this leg of mine... Yeah, I know. By the time you got outside, she was gone. That's right. Well, what about Lester? What about him? You've got to report him to the authorities. Oh, no. Look, Al... Look, you don't understand, Mike. If I open my yap, Ruth will never come back. And you think her return will settle everything? Yes. No, you're wrong. I know it's easy enough for me to talk. You did your duty once before and it cost your leg. It was worth it. Well, this is the same thing over again on a smaller scale. Men like Hitler poison people's minds. Lester works on their bodies. Well, let someone else nail him. No, that's just it. We can't let other people do our work. You're the only one who has the opportunity. Well, what about this Joey Willow kid who came in for a shot? No, we can't depend on him. Now, what do you say? You're going to let me call the cops? Okay. That's the boy. I'll do it right now. But you are going to try to find Ruth, huh? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Now, the man I want you to talk to is Sergeant Corbett. Uh, don't quote me, but he's all right. This guy... 86 Precinct, Reynolds. Is Corbett there? No. Have you any idea when he'll be in? Who wants him? Mike Waring. Well, uh, he's off today. When will he be back? Who knows? Look, Reynolds, this is official business. Well, that's tough, but it looks like you'll have to deal with me. All right. I got a friend named Al Romano. He works for an outfit named Lester Pharmaceuticals. So? Well, it's a blind. This Lester is up to his ears in narcotics. Now, what have you been smoking? All right, don't be a goon. This is on the level. Where's this Al Romano now? At my place. Well, uh, tell him to go on home. I'll drop by in 20 minutes. Fair enough. What did he say? You ought to go home. He'll pick you up there. Uh, wait, I'll get my coat. What for? I'm going with you. Oh, no, don't be silly. I don't need a nursemaid. Well, I still think... I that... know what you think, but I tell you it's all right. Or will be as soon as you find Ruthie. And I get to work out of her like a good boy. Who is it? Police. Open up. Oh, just a second. Come on in, sir. What's the matter, Al? What are you doing here, Lester? Well, I'll tell you. I, uh... I think maybe we both acted a little hasty this afternoon. Did we? Mm Mm-hmm. You didn't mean what you said, neither did I. But that kid, Joey Willow, bothered me. Yeah. He bothered me, too. You know, you're trouble, Romano. You're too sensitive. You mustn't let a little thing like that get under your skin. Are you all through? Now, be reasonable. Come back to work for me and I'll sweeten the ante. I'm not interested. Pay you two fifty a week and there'll be a bonus at the end of the year. You think I'd touch that money? Well, if you object to pushing the stuff, forget it. I'd just like to have you around. I'm not that pretty. Beauty is only skin deep. I like a man with character. Are you going to get out? Okay. I see where I made my mistake. You're the kind who won't touch gold, but I'll bet you'll take lead. Put away that gun, Les. What are you complaining about? 
you won't have to worry about that bad leg when they give you a set of wings. Happy landing, kiddo. No. <laughs> Hiya, Mike. Sergeant Corbett. Uh Uh-huh. Hey, I heard you were out of town. Not anymore. Well, come in. Does the uh, invitation include me? Do you have to bring him along? Yeah, Reynolds is an associate of mine, remember? And he just, just told me a very interesting story. Seems you called him this afternoon about an Al Romano. Well? Or was that before or after he was killed? What? You heard me. Well, that's impossible. I just saw Al a couple of hours ago. And it was after he was knocked off at 2 o'clock. I can't believe it. Well, if you'd like to accompany us to the morgue... Who did it? That's what we'd like to know. Have you talked to Vic Lester? Who's he? He's a real smooth type. Looks like he bays in lanolin plus. Al was working for him. So? So he thinks this Lester character was mixed up in narcotics. He was. Now, take it easy. What did Romano see you about? He wanted me to find his wife. You walk out on him? Yes. Did he have any insurance? None that I know of. He was in the army, wasn't he? So? So he must have been covered. Well, even if he was, it's only for 10000 Only 10000 huh? I suppose that was pin money to the Romanos. No, you're nuts. Is he? Well, you don't believe him. Well, you got to admit he makes sense. After all, Romano's wife disappeared. Well, she'll turn up. You giving odds? What are you going to do about Lester? We'll get to him. Take care of it, Reynolds. Why can't you? I'm going to concentrate on Mrs. Romano. Well, forget it. I tell you, Lester's our man. Well, then I'll leave him to you and Reynolds. And if you guys can't handle him, we'll get the Girl Scouts. Every day last year on the highways, an average of 103 Americans like yourself or those in your family were killed in automobile accidents. But a lot of highway deaths don't seem to bother us much unless someone in our own family is killed. We are shocked, however, and do become excited when an occasional disaster or catastrophe strikes and claims a large toll of life. Why? If a tornado over which man has no control strikes several states and kills 100 or 200 people, is that disaster any worse than 100 or 200 Americans being killed in a single day in automobile accidents? The daily toll of 103 deaths a day in traffic accidents is America's greatest shame. You can do your part in helping to fight this disaster on the highways by being a safer driver and by working in your community for strict law enforcement that means safer traveling for all of us. At all times, you must remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Sergeant Corbett and Detective Bill Reynolds informed Mike of the murder of Al Romano. And now at the office of Lester Pharmaceuticals. Yeah? Hello, Lester. Well, if it ain't that high-flying bird, the Falcon. Yeah, see, I got here before Bill Reynolds. Who's he? A cop. Friend of yours? No, he isn't. Oh, nice place you got here. You like it? I think it's lovely. What's back there? Just another office. Can I see it? Well, oh, the painting in there now. Well, I'll be real careful. Oh, I wouldn't hear of it. It might ruin your clothes. Well, that's a nice suit you're wearing. I guess this business pays off better than making books. Huh? It does. What made you decide to switch? Well, I tell you, I read somewhere that people are always sick, so I figured this might be a good racket. Mm-hmm. Would you believe it if I no, told... No, I wouldn't. I'm just going to tell you how much boric acid we handled. <laughs> that's a new name for it. What do you know about Al Romano's death? You mean something happened to Al? Yes, suddenly and violently. So he did it after all. Hmm. What are you babbling about? Well, I don't know how close you were. Real close. He was my friend. Well, then you know he used to get these fits of depression about that game leg of his. What are you trying to hand me? Well, didn't he commit suicide? With two slugs in him? Oh, I didn't know that. I haven't seen a paper all day. Hey, do you think it could have been his wife? I heard they were having trouble. And I heard he had trouble with you. I hate to upset your apple cart wearing, but I've got an alibi. Oh, sure. Let's hear it. Tell me something. You're a private dick, aren't you? That's right. And cops are city employees? So? So when you pass your civil service exam, ask me again. It's been nice seeing you, fella. I'm sorry you have to run. A 
tell you, Corbett, this Lester is our boy. If I will get you ten, he'd kill Romano. Well, I kind of doubt it, Mike. After all, you got no proof. Well, if you'd only talk to him... He doesn't have to. I did. Oh, oh, come on in, Reynolds. What's the story? I just came from Lester's office. And? It's all on the up and up. Went through the place with a fine-tooth comb. Well, there must have been a few teeth missing. Quiet. What about Romano's murder? He's got an alibi for the time. I don't believe it. Why didn't he spill it to me? I don't think he likes you. You know, that's possible. Now, never mind that. Let's have the dope. At the time Romano was killed, Lester was at the Paramount. Oh, no. How do you know? I checked with an usher. He remembered him. With 90 million people in the joint, he remembers Lester? Yes. Lester had some trouble in the check room. He thought he left his coat there. They found it later in the men's lounge. Oh, that's rich. What's wrong with it? Everything. It's too pat. Oh, you're nuts. Anyone who looked the least bit like him could have passed muster. Well, then you think... I think Lester staged the entire bit. While he went over to kill Romano, he had one of his friends make the fuss at the theater. You don't know what you're talking about. Look, Reynolds... I'm lucky. Now, that's enough out of you two. Reynolds, suppose you check with Haskell, see if he's learned anything about Romano's wife. Okay, Sergeant. I want to know as soon as they find her. Right. Look, Corbett, you're not buying that alibi. Well, have to, unless you can sell me something better. I tell you, Lester killed Al Romano. He had motive, he had opportunity. Well, so did Mrs. Romano. Remember? Hey, wait a minute. Think of something? Yes. Now, Lester must be part of a narcotic ring. Well, you heard what Reynolds said. I don't care what he said. I tell you, he's a junk dealer. And somewhere in the chain, there's bound to be a weak link. You show me where. Well, that's just it. I don't know... Wait a minute. Hold everything. Al told me about a boy named Joey Willow. Now, suppose this Willow character talks. Well, he wouldn't to a cop. No, but he might to someone else. I'm going to give it the old college try. <laughs> Yeah, what can I do for you? Is Joey Willow around? Yeah, I think so. I saw him about... Oh, there he is. Hey, hey, Joey. Yeah? There's a fellow here who wants to see you. Oh, you're looking for me? Yeah, I am for Joey Willow. Who are you? Mike. I'm a buddy of Vic Lester. Oh, you're working for Lester? Who else? Let's go in the back. Okay, you sure we won't be disturbed? Positive. Me and the boss are like this. Wait till I turn on the light. Where's the stuff? Huh? Well, didn't Les send it over with you? Oh, sure, sure. I got it right here. Well, start pushing, boy. I'm low. Now, take it easy, Joey. I want to talk to you first. We'll talk later. Remember a boy named El Romano? Where's the stuff? Relax. Don't tell me to relax. What does Les think he's pulling, anyway? Well, he's just being careful. You know, this could mean a prison term if I'm dealing with a stoolie. I'm no stoolie. I'm one of his best customers. You get all your junk from him? Yeah. Were you there this afternoon when he had his beef with El Romano? You asked too many questions. Well, I explained to you. Hey, you know what? I think you're a phony. Yeah, I don't think Lester sent you here at all. No, you're wrong, kid. Okay, we'll find out. Put down that phone. I said put down that phone. I suppose we go for a little ride. Phil! Phil! Yeah, what's the trouble? Yeah, this guy's pushing me around. Get your hands off him. No, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. He's my brother. What do they call you, Weeping Willows? No, I beat it. That gun loaded? What do you think? I think I'd better go quietly. So long, fellas. I'll be seeing you. After my brother kicked him out, I thought I'd better tell you. Well, you were right, Joey. He didn't get nothing out of me, Les. I appreciate it. Why don't you show it? With some stuff. Are well, you fresh out? And I always? Oh, that's tough, kid, because I don't have a grain in the place. What? I was supposed to pick up three ounces today, but I couldn't take delivery with that Mike wearing on my tail. <laughs> Why, that dirty no good. Yeah, it's guys like him that are spoiling your fun. Oh, boy, if I could get my hands on him again. Well, maybe you can. Huh? Suppose I make you a proposition. You take care of wearing, and I'll take care of you. Uh, what does that mean? Just what it sounded like. But I haven't got a gun. Well, that's no problem. Oh, no. I don't want it. Okay. But don't come crying to me when you feel like you're dying. I'm dying now. Well, it's Waring's fault. With him out of the way, I could keep you supplied forever. No, I couldn't do it. Look at me. A shot will fix that up. Yeah, but you said you I didn't... I just happened to remember I got a loaded syringe in the safe. Let me have it. Will you get Waring? Just give me the stuff. Okay. 41 rounds. Seven left. Sixty-nine runs. 
Here you are. How good is this? The best. Practically 100% pure stuff. Where can Back I... Back office. I'll keep watch out here. Yeah. Your pal, Les. Ain't I, though? Find everything you need in the medicine chest. Well, where is it? Never mind, I got it. Need any help? What do you think I am, an amateur? I know my way around. All right, hurry it up. I don't know if it's my imagination or what, but I feel a million percent better already. It ain't your imagination, kid. Oh. Roll down your sleeve. Huh? Oh, sure. You're a pal, Les. You said that before. I mean it. Oh, the way I feel now, I could lick the world. Then one man named Waring shouldn't be any problem at all. Here's the gun, Joey. Let's see what you can do. Come on in. How did you get in here? Ah, you remember me, huh? How could I ever forget? You're Joey Willow. That's me, Joey Willow. How's the air up there? Huh? Offhand, I'd say you were flying at 10,000 feet. Get smart and I'll let you have it right now. Where'd you get that gun? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? That's why I asked. But I think Lester made a mistake. He should have come himself. You talk too much. That's yeah, so I've been told. Well, I'm going to break you the habit. Oh, you can kill me. But what'll that get you? Enough. No, it won't. Lester isn't long for this world. They'll get to him sooner or later, and then where will you be? Shut up. What's the matter, Joey? The stuff wearing off? Listen, you... You don't get quite the wallop out of it you used to, huh? What'll you do when Lester can't keep you supplied? What? You'll feel like you're burning up. You know how it hits you. You can't eat, you can't sleep, you just want to die. Are you going to shut up? Look at you. Even now you're shaking so you couldn't hit the side of a bomb. Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> what did I tell you? Let go. Come on, drop it. Let me go. Or I'll break your arm. No, I... All right, now sit down and behave yourself. Listen, where Shut are... up. Who, who are you calling? I'll give you one guess. I didn't mean it. It's all Lester's fault. You don't know how it feels when you... 86 Precinct, Corbett. Hello, Sergeant. This is Waring. Where you been? Working, which is more than I can say for you fellas. I just solved your case. Did you now? Yes. I got a boy and a gun here who'll bear me out. Come again? I just latched onto the weapon that killed Al Romano. And who do you think sent it over? Mr. Vic Lester himself. Can you top that? Maybe I can. Suppose I told you that Lester was knocked off an hour ago. He what? And since you two didn't get along so well, maybe we ought to have a little talk. You want to come over by yourself, or should I send a car? What do you and your family do on a weekend? If you're average Americans, on a Saturday or Sunday, you enjoy your car. You take a short drive or a long trip. If you use your automobile a lot on weekends, you have a good idea how many millions of cars pour out onto the highways on weekends. That's one reason why the traffic death toll is so high and why the utmost caution is needed in weekend driving more than any other time. Along with the good drivers, we see the speeders, the drinkers, the reckless ones, the inexperienced drivers, and those who won't yield an inch out on the roads. As a result, deaths in weekend automobile accidents have increased sharply, about 2,600 annually. That is an average of 50 more fatalities every weekend in 1951 than in 1946. Injuries in Saturday and Sunday traffic accidents are now 200,000 greater in a year. On weekends particularly, remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. <laughs> Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Mike received the general information that Vic Lester was murdered. And now at police headquarters, we find Sergeant Corbett filling him in on the details. Uh, as near as we can figure it, Lester was killed at seven o'clock. Where were you at that time, Waring? Now listen, Reynolds. He's entitled to an answer. Well, you certainly don't think I killed him. Where's my motive? You thought he knocked off a pal of yours. He did. Well, I, uh... Oh, you're crazy. That's all Lester wants, and that was enough. Well, where were you at 7 o'clock? On my way home. That's a hot one. Lay off, Reynolds. Look, Sergeant... I said lay off. He didn't kill Lester. Then who did? Let's take it from the top of the page. You better start, Mike. 
Well, we know for a fact that Lester killed Romano. How do we know that for a fact? By the gun I took off Joey Willow. He admitted Lester gave it to him. And the bullets match up with the slugs you removed from Romano's body. Go on. Well, when Lester felt I was getting too close for comfort, he steamed Joey Willow into gunning me. I'll buy that. Well, even Granny's right, Sergeant. Still doesn't solve anything. Doesn't it? No, we got another murder on our hands. If Lester killed Romano, who killed Lester? Mm, What about Joey Willow? I don't see it. Waring's his alibi. That's right. He was waiting for me at my place. Now, obviously, there's someone else we haven't thought of. Well, how about Mrs. Romano? Yeah. That makes sense. Not to me, it doesn't. Where's her motive? Well, Lester killed her husband. Oh, Corbett, make up your mind. First, you were looking for her because you felt Ruth was fed up with Al. Now you claim she was so madly in love with him, she wanted to avenge his murder. You can't have it both ways. So where do we go from here? We've looked high and low. Have we? What do you mean? Well, I know we looked low when we found Joey Willow, but we haven't looked high. I don't get it. You do, don't you, Reynolds? I'm afraid I don't. A lesson never could have stayed in business without some form of protection. Doesn't it strike you strange that Al Romano was killed right after he agreed to talk to the police? Wouldn't that be the natural time? Sure. But who knew his plan? His wife did. No, she didn't. She only knew he was coming to see me. But there was one person who knew Romano was going to implicate Lester. Who? You. What? Right after I phoned you, you must have called Lester and told him the worst. You're crazy. You told him he had to get rid of Romano before you got there. You figured that would solve everything. You don't blame him, do you, Corbett? I want to hear more. Then after Romano's death, when I kept insisting Lester was behind it, Reynolds felt he had to get rid of Lester for his own protection. Look, Sergeant, you can listen to this if you want to, but I've got... Stay where you are. Get his gun, Mike. It'll be a pleasure. Hey, look what I found. What do you make of this? What do I make of what? His service revolver. It's been fired recently. Let me see that. I I can explain it, Sergeant. Shut up. Or do you bet the slug that killed Lester came from this gun? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Uh, do me a favor, Mike. Sure, Sergeant. Leave me and Reynolds alone for a while. I got some departmental business I want to take up with them. Alone. Corbett, cheer up. How about stopping somewhere for a beer? No, no, I don't feel like celebrating. And I think what the public will make of this. Oh, they'll understand. They know the thousands of decent things cops do do every day of the year don't make news. It's only when a cop does something rotten that makes headlines. Still, he was a cop. Well, Reynolds wouldn't have been any different if he was a fireman or a garbage collector. There are guys like him in every business in the world. You just can't keep them out. Yeah, but they're the exception, not the rule. Well, everybody knows that. Incidentally, what did he tell you? He was working with Lester for the past six months. When he thought you were getting too close for comfort, he decided to get rid of Lester so there'd be no trail leading back to him. He confessed all that, huh? And more. (laughs) You should have seen him. You couldn't ask for a more cooperative witness. Hmm. He was practically crying for the stenographer to get it all down. Well, I can't see why he... Oh, wait a minute. What happened when I left you two alone? Well, this is strictly between us. Oh, sure. But I figured if Reynolds could forget for six months he was a cop... You were entitled to forget it for six minutes. Actually, it was closer to 16. (laughs) Good night, Mike. The Case of the Fatal Six. The Case of the Fatal Six. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that no matter how careful a killer may be, leaving bodies is always a dead giveaway. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. This is Fred Collins speaking.
Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Irene. I'm glad you called. Now you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. Uh, some boy I know thinks he can get away with murder. And I've got to prove that if he leaves a body behind, it's bound to be a dead giveaway. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the fatal fix. It's late afternoon in New York, and a young man named Danny Hickok steps out of the elevator and jauntily strides toward the penthouse suite on the 28th floor of the Belmont. Yes, Danny's come up in the world. But right now, he's in for a letdown. Hello, Danny. How'd you get in here? I told the desk clerk I was your father. You got your nerve. Why, isn't it true? Don't blame me. What do you want? I got a call this morning from the police. Well? Have you any idea why they're looking for you? I must overpark. You're lying. Look, I don't have to take that from you. You're going to take a lot more. I found this note on your dresser. Look up George Pulaski. It's signed the Greek. Give me that. Is that the same Pulaski who was murdered last night? I wouldn't know. Now, look, Danny, you've got to tell me everything. There's nothing to tell. There is, if you believe the Morgan Committee. According to them, the crime syndicate in this country is headed by a man called the Greek. So? So how come he writes you notes? And how come I found this money in your drawer? Because you're nosy. There's $8,000 in this roll, Danny. Where did it come from? None of your business. Why, you little punk, who do you think you're talking to? What? Don't ever try that again, because father or not, the next time I'll let you have it. I mean it. Well, I'm going to get the truth if I have to. Ah, sorry, gents, but I did knock. <laughs> Mr. Hickok in the house? There's two of them. Well, the one I want is Danny. That's me. Yeah, glad to know you, Danny. Wonder if you'd mind taking a little ride with me. Who the devil are you? Oh, that's right. I haven't introduced myself. The name's Corbett. Sergeant James Corbett, to give my full billing. Yeah, if you'd like to see my shield. Never mind. What's the beef? Well, to make a long story short, a fellow named George Pulaski was knocked off last night. So? So we got to tip you did it for the Greek. Oh, you're crazy. Mm, I've been accused of that before. There must be some mistake. And where'd he get the dough to run this place? I gave it to him. I'm his father. It won't wash, Mr. Hickok. We checked on you, too. I tell you, you're wrong. I'm the one you want. Who asked you to butt in? Shut up. Don't do me any favors. Look, Sergeant, there's an easy way to settle this. I got the proof in the bedroom. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? To get it. Hold it, Danny. All right, fella, come on out. I'm warning you. You're not out of there by the time I... Got... What was that? That's what it sounded like. Give me a hand. You don't think... Come on. One, two... Sorry, Mr. Hickok. You better wait outside. I gotta call the coroner. That's the story, Mr. Waring. After the sergeant and I broke down the door, we... You uh, found Danny. Yes, I still don't understand why he did it. Well, it's pretty obvious. He was working for the Greek. And he knew it was the chair once they nabbed him. It's all my fault. If I'd done a better job, he wouldn't have turned out this way. Who's to say? I am. I want your help so as I can make it up to him. Well, isn't it a little late? Well, better late than never. I want you to find the man they call the Greek. Find the Greek? Yes, I want to know who and what he is. Yeah, so do the police. They've been trying to identify him for years. Danny knew. Well, he certainly isn't going to spill it now. There must be some way. No, no, forget it. I told you that... I know the police have been trying to run him down for years. Well, maybe they're making the same mistakes over and over again. That should make it easier for you. Well, I wouldn't know where to start. I don't care about the where. The important thing is when. And here's $500 to do it now. Yeah. 
The bartender is Joey Wilson. Oh, never mind, I see him. Hello, Joey. Well, what'd I do to rate this, huh? Well, you're just lucky, I guess. Mind if I join you? I certainly do, Warren. I'm particular about the people I'm seen with. Well, obviously I'm not. What do you want? A little conversation. I haven't got time. Well, you better change your mind, Joey. You'll find yourself with nothing else but about ten years' worth at Little at Sing Sing. Cops are still looking for the party who fixed that Bryson jury. I don't know nothing about it. Uh, my mistake. I heard you did it for the Greek. Well, you got rocks in your head. No, don't let the sound effects fool you, Joey. They're only pebbles. Where can I find the big boy? I ain't got the slightest idea. Okay. Let it be like you say. Too bad I got to talk to the cops. Wait a minute. Yeah? I tell you, I don't know who the Greek is. You can start me up the ladder. Go on home. What for? Wait for a phone call. You going to make the first contact for me? I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no. Just go home and wait. Well, I'll give him ten more minutes. If he doesn't call by then, I'll... Hello? I'd like to talk to Mike Waring, please. Who is this? Never mind. You wearing? That's right. I understand you're trying to locate the Greek. You understand correctly. You know what'll happen to anyone who fingers him for you. You don't have to worry. This is business. He's got enough now to keep him occupied. Then why did you call? I need a steak. I'll pay you 500 bucks for the genuine article. Well, I don't know who the Greek is, but uh, I got an idea who does. You mean I have to do some more climbing? Yeah. So if you got a bad heart, I'd watch those steps. You still interested? Let's have it. How would I get the dough? How would you suggest? Mail it to Willie Smith, care of general delivery. Fair enough. I got your word? Yep. Well, if I was you, I'd see a man named Alvin Myers. He's got a place at the Beaumont. What makes you think he knows the Greek? If he don't, nobody does. This Myers is a chubby party. I think he'll spell if you put it to him the right way. And what exactly is the right way? Look, I can't write the script for you. Just giving you Myers. From there on, you're on your own. I'm not very bright, Mr. Waring, but I'm still rather puzzled at the reason for this visit. Now, mind you, I've enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, well, thanks. But I was told Alvin Myers could put me in touch with the Greek. Uh, you were told? By whom? A mutual friend. That's rather vague. It'll have to do. And uh, just why do you want to contact the Greek? I've got a deal for him. <laughs> Tell me something, Mr. Waring. Do I look weak-minded? No. Well, you must think so to come here with that story. What's wrong with it? Everything. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a private detective? I am. Uh, currently, you're employed by one William Hickok. Where'd you hear that? Well, aren't you? No. Huh. Isn't that strange? I wonder where I got the idea. Yeah, I wonder, too. Well, I was given to understand shortly after his son committed suicide, Mr. Hickok came to you with a request that you find the Greek. For some unknown reason, he thinks our mysterious friend was involved. He was. Danny was working for him. Uh, that's only your opinion. The police share it with me. But I've got a feeling I'm accomplishing something they didn't. Oh, really? Yes. I think I'm talking to the Greek right now. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard yet. Well, you're easily amused. Are you the Greek? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Well, we'll soon find out. My informant led me to believe you uh, don't like being manhandled. What? Yeah, he thought you might crack under a little pressure. And... You wouldn't dare... Well, you shouldn't have said that. Myers! I... Are you the Greek? I asked you something. No, 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 no. Well, no. answer me. Are you the Greek? No. But you know who he is. On my word, I... He'll kill me. Well, you better talk now. Who is he? His name is Vincent Romayo. Romayo? Yes. Where does he live? In Brooklyn, on Sycamore. Now, that's one for the book. Listen, Myers... If you're tossing me a curve, I'll be back. And believe me, you'll enjoy my next trip to the plate even less. Oh, 
Yes, please. I'd like to see Mr. Romayo. Oh, sure. Hey, Papa! Papa! What's the matter, though? Uh, some man wants to see you. Well, why you make him wait outside? Tell him to come in. Oh, you like to come in, Mr. Uh, Waring. Oh, Papa, he'll be right out. Okay. Hey, sit down. Thanks. Oh, no, no, no. Take the other chair. This one's got a broken spring. Oh. I tell Papa he should fix it, but uh, all the time he's too busy. He is, huh? All the time he listens to ball games on the radio. All the day he's dodges, dodges, dodges. <laughs> hey, you a friend of Papa? Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Uh, I thought maybe you know him when he was in the ice business. Ice business? Oh, sure. Papa used to have a big company, three trucks. Now, wait a minute. Something wrong? I'm beginning to think so. Oh, Papa, this is Mr. Waring. Uh, Mike Waring. Mike Waring. Let me see. Don't I know this name from someplace? Sure. You, you private detective. That's right. Rosa, you know who this is? It's a falcon. Oh, no. Remember we read about them in the papers? Oh, my, my. Maybe he like a little wine. Oh, no, 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 thanks. Sir. Oh, please, try. Rosa, make it herself. Mama, some vino for Mr. Waring, Oh, yeah? sure. Oh, no, really, Mrs. Oh, it's no trouble. Wait till you taste. Uh, Rosa makes the best wine anybody in the whole United States. Yeah, I'm sure she does. Uh, but look at me, all the time I talk. I don't even ask what I can do for you. Well, I uh, got a proposition for the Greek. You got a proposition for her? The Greek. No, Stan. Didn't you ever hear about him? Huh? He's supposed to head the rackets in this country. Oh, sure, I remember. They talk about him on the radio. He's a very bad man, very bad man. Mm -hmm. You know anything about him? Uh, just what I hear. Uh, Mama, don't let me listen too much. She says it's bad for my heart. Uh, even the ball game. He's still talking, eh? <laughs> hey, you tried this, Mr. Waring. I got the one for you too, Papa. But such a little one. Uh, it's more than enough. You know what the doctors say. All right, all right. Well, Mr. Waring, you help. Yes, yeah, sure. Salute. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> you hear, Mama? He lied. <laughs> Last year is much better. Well, I can't believe that. Uh, by the way, Mr. Mayo, uh, your wife tells me you were in the ice business. That's right. <laughs> I retired four years ago. Mm -hmm. My son, Jimmy, he ran the business now. Uh -huh. You ever hear of a man named Danny Hickok? No. Oh, sure we do, Papa. Huh? You remember we read about him in the paper last week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a young fellow who killed himself in a hotel. His father find him. Poor man. Ah, it's his own fault, Rosa. If he bring a boy like we bring up Jimmy, he don't go around the killing people. Well, you never know. Anyway, this Hickok was supposed to be on the Greek's payroll. Huh? Uh, I understand. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. As I was told, you were the Greek. Me? Who says such a thing? Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, you got to tell me. I send my boy Jimmy to beat him up. Now, Papa. Oh, you hear what he say, yeah? Please. All right, yeah, all right, all right, all right. It's just a joke. Forget it. Uh, Oh, uh, you go already? Yeah, I got to. Oh, but, you know, finish your wine. You know life. Oh, yes, yes, sure I do. But I've got to get back to work. I'm sorry if I put you to any trouble. What's well, not trouble at all. Uh, maybe you come to Brooklyn again sometime. Yeah, huh? sure. If the Dodgers win the pennant. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean, if? Arrivederci. Such a nice man. Yeah, yeah. I wish Jimmy could see him. Hey, Rose. I think I smell something burning. Oh, my chicken cacciatore! A, B, four, two, one, one, three. Yeah. Joey. That's right. What's the name of that new boy from Toledo? What boy? The one who knows all about manhunting. Monty Stevens. Ah. Well, tell him to get in touch with the Greek. I got a little job for him. Summer is just around the corner on the calendar. This year, we're getting a lucky break, too, because there are three three-day holiday weekends. Memorial Day, the 4th of July, and Labor Day. For most of us, that's fine, but we should always keep in mind that these long weekend holidays will be tragic times for some of us who start out gaily to enjoy them. For instance, last year, over the Labor Day weekend, which always lasts three days, the average was 153 deaths a day in traffic mishaps. So take a lesson from the figures. And at all times, and particularly on long holiday weekends, drive as though your life depends on it. 
It does. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike Waring's meeting with Vincent Romayo. And now at Mike's apartment, he unhappily sums up the matter for his client. Well, that's the story, Hickok. It's a bum steer. When I got to Brooklyn, I found this couple and more wonderful pair you never met. And this Romayo wasn't the Greek. No, nope, Myers was pulling my leg. Well, where do we go from here? Well, where can we go? Every lead I had petered out. What about Alvin Myers? Why don't you see him again? No, no, that wouldn't be any use. He'd be ready for me now. No, it just looks as though... Say, wait a minute. Did you see the newspaper accounts of your son's suicide? No. Well, I read them all, religiously. There was very little there. All it said was, when you and Sergeant Corbett broke down the door, you found Danny. We did. And there was nothing about your son committing suicide because he was implicated in the murder of Pulaski. Well... Well, Romayo knew that. He knew Danny was a gunman. How could he? I didn't know it myself. Yeah, that's just it. He must be the Greek. Holy cow, I've got to see Sergeant Corbett. Well, then you won't be needing me anymore? Well, he might want to talk to you. I'll be easier to find than the Greek. So long, Waring, and thanks again. You've been more help than you know. Oh, that you, Haskell? Surprise. It's me. Oh, I knew my luck couldn't last. Now, look, Mike, I just got a flash on a murder, so if you don't mind... You know, I... if uh, someone heard you, they'd think you didn't want me around. Yeah, well, they'd be right. Yeah, well, suppose I told you I discovered the identity of the Greek. You what? Uh, I spoke to him a couple of hours ago. And you're just telling me? Well, it didn't dawn on me till later. Uh, well, who is he? You'd never guess. First of all, he isn't Greek. And where do you suppose he lives? Oh, in a luxurious duplex on Park Avenue. No, wrong again. In a two-family house in Brooklyn on Sycamore. On Sick. Name wouldn't be Vincent Romayo, would it? How did you know? He was murdered 15 minutes ago. You're kidding. Sure, that's what the city pays me for, to make jokes. Who else knew Romayo was a Greek? No one. You sure? Well, I figured it out while I was talking to Hickok. That does it. What? You're out of your mind. Well, he had a motive, didn't he? I say after you left him, Hickok went over to Brooklyn and gave him a belt. Hey, that's a good one, Hickok belt. Oh, you were right when you said the city wasn't paying you to make jokes. Well, I'm not joking. Five will get you ten, Hickok's our boy. You got a bet. And here's where I collect. Yes, sir? Haskell, get a 37 out on William Hickok. I want him picked up immediately. Sergeant, I don't know anything about Romayo's murder. Well, you knew your son was working for the Greek. Yes. You felt he was responsible for his suicide. Yes, but I didn't kill him. When did you leave Waring's apartment? It must have been around three. It was closer to two. Thanks. Where'd you go from there? Home. Anybody see you? No, I live alone. So you've got no alibi. I don't need one. Well, we'll leave that for a jury to decide. Haskell, we're through here. Book him. Listen, Hickok. I'll get you out of this. I wish you wouldn't, Waring. You've done enough for me already. Well, I had to tell him. Sure you did. Yeah. You know something, Mike? I don't think he likes you. Well, I don't blame him. But he didn't kill the Greek. No? Then who did? Well, I have no idea. But as long as I found the Greek, maybe I can find his killer. I'll be seeing you, Sergeant. <laughs> Yes? Hello, Myers. Remember me? Unfortunately. Well, you might invite me in. I might, but I don't think I will. No, you're doing me an injustice. Now, get out. I just want to thank you. I found the Greek. You saw Romayo? Yeah, a couple of hours before the police did. Did they pick him up? Literally. According to what I hear, they had to use a sponge. What do you mean? He was in a million pieces. Someone took a shotgun to the man. How shocking. Yes, well, I imagine it doesn't make you feel too badly... With the Greek out of the picture, what becomes of his empire? I have the vaguest notion. 
Well, I've got a feeling you're the crown prince. Naturally, that makes you a suspect. Oh, you're insane. Mm-hmm. Well, then who do you suggest? What about your client? Hickok? Yes. Well, when I collect a fee from a man, naturally, I like to give him the benefit of any doubt. And uh, you wouldn't be above involving an innocent party? No, of course not. Got any suggestions? No. Well, I have. I think you'd look lovely in a frame. You wouldn't dare. Look, you said that once before. Remember what happened? I, 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 don't touch me. Who else knew Romayo was the Greek? What about his wife? Don't be ridiculous. I met the woman. You met him, too, and he had you fooled? Well, didn't he? Well, you got a point there, Myers. Let's hope for your sake I don't get stuck on it. <laughs> Poor Papa. Why they do such a thing? Why they do it? All right, now, Mrs. Romayo, you've got to control yourself. Papa never hurt anybody. You see him, Mr. Waring. He was a good man. Well, let's open the question. What? Look, Mrs. Romayo, how much did you know of your husband's affairs? Everything. Well, the police believe your husband was the Greek. That's crazy. He was no Greek. You don't believe these stories, Mr. Waring. I tell you, Papa was a good man. Did he ever go out at all? No. He had a bad heart. Well, did strange people ever come to the house? Never. Only relatives and friends. Well, then he must have transacted all his business over the phone. It's not true. Look, Mrs. Romayo, you've got to face the facts. Papa was a good man. He got to church every Sunday. Sure, that left him six days a week to get into trouble. Get out! Now, Mrs. Romayo... You say bad things about Papa. Get out! And don't ever come back! Oh, no. Yeah, I've got to talk to you, Corbett. I've just been out to Brooklyn to see Mrs. Romayo. Yeah, that makes it a double header for you today. Hey, you ought to be playing with the Giants. Listen, I'm serious. So am I. They could use an outfielder. Well, what'd you learn? Nothing. I'd swear she never knew her husband was mixed up in the rackets. Well, it doesn't make any difference. Hickok killed Romayo. I don't believe it. Well, who else is in the picture? Well, no one except... Hey, wait a minute. What do you think of Alvin Myers? What do you mean? What do I think of him? He was real close to the Greek. So close he may have been the only one who knew his real identity. Oh, you're reaching, pal. I tell you. Yes? Call for you, Sergeant. I'm busy. It's Alvin Myers. I don't care. It's who? Alvin Myers. He said it was very important. Well, put him on. It's Myers. Speak of the devil. Go ahead, please. Sergeant Corbett? That's right. Uh, This is Alvin Myers. I demand police protection. Yeah, what's the trouble? There's someone lurking around my apartment. Just a few minutes ago, I... Hello, Myers. Myers! What's wrong? Something's gone dead, and I don't think it's the phone. Let's go see for sure. There's a price tag on almost everything. The price tag on speed violations last year was 15,000 killed and 500,000 injured. This year, thousands of lives can be saved if you and millions of other motorists come to the sober realization that speed is the biggest killer on the highways and resolve to slow down before you or someone else pays the price that must be paid for it. At all times, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Fifteen minutes have passed since Alvin Myers phoned Sergeant Corbett and demanded police protection. Apparently, he needed it, for right in the midst of the call, there was a shot. And now, outside Myers' apartment. Uh, It's locked. What'd you expect? Get out of my way. This one ought to do it. You hear that? Hit those lights. Myers, you all right? Yeah, we better call a doctor. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Uh, see what you can do for him. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, all right. Now, take it easy. You'll be okay. Uh, Where does it hurt? Maybe I can eat... Uh, hey, Sergeant, wait a minute. Hold the phone. Yeah, what's the matter? There's nothing wrong with him. I'm hurt. Uh, that's your imagination. A bullet missed you by a mile. Yeah, what are you talking about? Look at that hole in the ceiling. The slug entered there, and it certainly didn't go through him first. Well, then he just fainted. Yeah, he's just a great big sissy. Come on, Myers, on your feet. Let me alone. I'll leave you alone. What happened here? 
I don't know. Don't give us that. Who fired that shot at you? I tell you, I don't know. My back was to the window. Well, do you have any idea who might want to kill you? No. I have. It's obvious this is tied up with the Greek's murder. Oh, ridiculous. Well, it doesn't make sense otherwise. It doesn't make sense, period. All right, now let's take it from the beginning. First, Hickok's son commits suicide, and Hickok asked me to find the Greek. Which you did. Yeah, but only because Myers here helped me. That's not true. Shut up. It wasn't that simple, Sergeant. Before I got my lead to Myers, I did a lot of legwork. My first contact was Joey Wilson. Well, did he give you Myers? No, he told me to go home and wait for a phone call. And about an hour later, it came. Who was it? Well, that's just the trouble. He wouldn't leave his name. But he told me Myers could put me in touch with the Greek. Hey, sounds like he had a grudge against Myers. Well, he claimed he was doing it for dough. But you don't believe it? No. I got a hunch when we latch onto my mysterious phone caller, we'll be home. You got any idea who it could be, Myers? None at all. Well, it must be someone real close to you. He knew of your business relationship with the Greek. I don't see how there was none. Look, Sergeant, could you leave us alone for a couple of minutes? Uh, don't you dare. All right, then start talking. Who killed the Greek? Uh, I was under the impression it was Mr. Hickok. Well, Hickok couldn't have taken that shot at you. He's in jail. Then who did? I submit it was my mysterious phone caller. Oh, that's absurd. What are you getting at, Mike? Someone, let's call him Mr. X... Knew Hickok wanted to locate the Greek, so he made it real easy for me. Why? Because he planned to kill the Greek himself, and he figured if Hickok knew the Greek's whereabouts, my client would get the credit. Well, where's that get us? We don't know who this Mr. X is. Oh, sure we do. Don't we, Myers? Do we? Well, you should. It was you. Huh. That's very amusing. You were my mysterious informant. Screwy as it sounds, you put me in touch with yourself. No. Yes. It was a nice piece of work you did, and you'll probably get the chair for it. And believe me... It couldn't happen to a more deserving character. Oh, I don't get it. I don't get it at all, Mike. Why'd Myers go through that whole routine? What do you mean, routine? Well, for instance, that business of the phone call. Well, he had to work it that way, Sergeant. He had to make it look as though he divulged the identity of the Greek under pressure. Uh -huh. Naturally, we'd be suspicious if he volunteered the information. And once Hickok knew who the Greek was, then Myers could safely kill him. Well, I still don't see his motive. Well, like Caesar, he was ambitious. He thought he could do a better job heading the rackets than the Greek. And that phony attempt on himself. It was designed to take the heat off. He knew we were bound to get back to him sooner or later. This way, he beat us to the punch. Yeah, he had it all figured out. Well, I wish I could well, what bothers you, little man? For one thing, Romayo. He, he doesn't add up. Oh, sure he does. Just a classic case of a man leading a double life. Only he did it real well. Hey, you, you think his wife knew? No, she convinced me that uh, he was legit. Now, does that uh, take care of all your questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Hey, wait, wait. Wait a minute. What about the check? Well, since you took care of finding the Greek and you took care of his killer... I think you deserve the honor of taking care of that, too. <laughs> Good night, Mike. The Case of the King of Hearts. The Case of the King of Hearts. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that even when you play your cards right... Sometimes the game can be murder. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Myrna, I'm glad you called. Now, I'll have to take a rain check, Angel. I've got a date for bridge. Mm -hmm. Some card I know thinks he can trump another man's queen, and with the joke a while, the game can be murdered. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, 
risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the King of Hearts. It's late afternoon in New York, and a handsome gent named Johnny King steps out of the elevator at the Carlton. Way, please. In the lead is an enterprising bellhop named Billy Matthews, carrying two light pieces of luggage. It seems like nothing to Billy, but in just a minute, he's going to have his hands full. This is it, Mr. King. If you'll wait till I turn on the lights. Hey, it's all right. Would you uh, like me to open the window? Not a bad idea. Okay. Hey, it's quite a sight. They look like ants down there, don't they? Yes, sir. Maybe that's what they are. Look at them run. Mm-hmm. Most of them don't even know where they're going. I suppose not. Uh, will there be anything else, Mr. King? No. Oh, uh, wait a second. What's your name? Billy Matthews. You look like a bright boy, Billy. I bet you don't miss much that goes on around here. Oh, I keep my eyes open. How'd you like to make yourself 20 bucks? What would I have to do? Well, New York's a new town to me. I need someone to show me the ropes. What are you interested in? Women. Women? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, it figures. There must be a lot of rich dames living in a place like this. You must know them all. I'll get you, Mr. King. For instance, uh, who was the gal that got off the elevator as I came in? Good-looking blonde, about 5'3". That's the one. Her name is Grace Burton. Miss and Mrs. Mrs.? Mm Mm-hmm. Judging by that mink she was wearing, I'd say Papa was loaded. He is. What's he do? Uh, I don't know. One double or 20? He's a gambler. Suppose Mr. Burton's away from home a good deal. Uh Uh-huh. Where does he bank? Well, after all, Mr. King, you couldn't expect me to know... It's worth another 40. Federal Trust on Park Avenue. I knew I picked the right boy. All right, kid, you got yourself 80 bucks. You want to go for 160? What can I lose? I warn you, this is going to be tough. I want to know Mrs. Burton's maiden name, where she went to school, who her friends are, what they do, in short. You want a complete case history? You think you can handle it? Well, you see, 160 is a tough number to remember. If you could make it an even two, I could practically guarantee results. <laughs> oh, you're quite a chiseler. Well, I don't intend to be a bellhop all my life. I can see that. Okay, Billy, you got yourself a deal. Now, let's see you deliver. Yeah. Mr. King, this is Billy Matthews. Hiya, Billy. What's the score? We're leading. Three to nothing. Mrs. Burton's maiden name was Grace Sherman. Grace Sherman, hmm? Yeah, she went to Clinton High School in Chicago. What about college? Uh, Two years at Northwestern. Her best friend was an Alice Gordon. You must have been reading her mail. No more than I had to. It's pretty dull. What does she do to keep occupied? Uh, Nothing much. Matinees, shopping, the usual gook. But at 4 o'clock every day, you'll find her in a cocktail lounge downstairs. Alone? Yeah. She drinks Smirnoff. That's good to know. Well, wish me luck, kiddo. I'm off to the races. Waiter. Waiter. I'll be right with you, Mrs. Burton. Grace Sherman. What? Well, if you're not a sight for sore eyes... I beg your pardon. Well, aren't you Grace Sherman? Well, that was my maiden name. So you went and did it, hmm? Now, look, mister... Am I being snubbed or don't you recognize me? I'm afraid I don't. I'm Johnny King. Johnny King? We went to Clinton High together. It's funny that I don't remember. Well, you did go to Clinton. Yes. And as I recall, you and Alice Gordon went to Northwestern for a couple of years afterwards. Yes, that's right. (laughs) I suppose I should be ashamed of myself. Well, I'm an easy man to forget. No, I wouldn't imagine so. Take my word for it. I've lived with me for 38 years. But if you'd rather... No, uh... no, please stay, mister. You see, you've forgotten again. King, Johnny King. (laughs) Won't you join me? Only if you let me buy you a drink. Waiter. Monsieur. Two uh, Smirnoff vodkas. Oh, you have a fantastic memory. Well, I've forgotten very little about you, Grace. Tell me, what have you been doing with yourself these last Why? few years? Well, for one thing, I got married. Anyone I know? No, I don't think so. He's from New York. His name is Dick Burton. What's he do? Oh, a little of this and that. He's out of town at the moment. And he lets a gorgeous creature like you run around loose? Oh, yes. Serve him right if he lost you. I don't think there's much danger in that. You never know. Your drinks, monsieur. Thanks. Uh, let's have two more of the same. Oh, really, Johnny? Look, we got to make up for lost time. Go on, waiter. Oui, monsieur. To us, Grace. I got a feeling that this time you won't ever forget me. Want 
Want to go through the park again, Grace? I up to you. Let's go on forever. Keep going, Kelly. You know, Johnny, this is the first time I've ever ridden in a hansom cab. It never occurred to Vic. You hear from him lately? Yes, he wired. He's got reservations on the super chief for Friday. Well, that gives us five days. I guess we ought to be grateful for small favors. Why couldn't I go on seeing you? For one thing, I've run out of money. You what? Well, I only intended to stay in town for a week, but meeting you messed up my plans. How long would you stay if you had good money? That's a pretty ridiculous question. How long would you stay? As long as you wanted me to. If you weren't married... Yes? Oh, what difference does it make? I want to know, Johnny. Grace, I'm crazy about you. I never met anyone before who hit me the way you did. I'm glad, because that's how I feel, too. Grace. When Vic comes home, I'm going to tell him. No, you mustn't. Why not? Because it wouldn't be any use. You see, I'm married, too. You're married? Don't look at me like that. I can't get a divorce. She's in an insane asylum. Oh, no. Happened four years ago when she lost the baby. Oh, you poor darling. Oh, that's the way it works out sometimes. So I guess it's back to Chicago for yours, truly. No. No, I won't let you go. I'll give you the money. What kind of a heel do you take me for? Consider it alone. No. Please, Johnny, please. If you love me. That's the one argument I can't answer. All right, Grace. I'll do what you want. That you, Grace? Yes, Vic. Where have you been? Shopping. Oh, I've got to get off my feet. You wouldn't believe how jammed the stores are. I should have imagined they'd have locked the doors and just waited on you. Hmm? Would have paid them. In case you haven't kept tabs, you wrote $18,000 worth of checks last month. I what? Well, isn't this your signature? They're all made out to cash. Well, what's wrong with it? Nothing, but I'd like to know where the money went. Oh, various things. For example? Well, how can you expect me to remember? Well, if I spent eighteen grand, I would. Don't you trust me? Of course. Then I why don't. the third degree? Well, after all, baby, eighteen thousand. There dollars. you go harping on that again. Well, if you must know, I I lost it gambling. You lost it gambling? Yes. Why should you have all the fun? Well, it isn't fun with me, sweetie. It's business. Who'd you drop the money to? I won't tell you. But you don't even have the faintest notion how to place a bet. Are you calling me a liar? Oh, I didn't mean it that way, but I got a right to know. Look, if you think I'm going to sit here while you make like Mr. District Attorney... Grace, where are you going? Grace! That's the story, Mike. When I asked Grace about the dough, she claimed she lost at gambling. Well, I want to know where that money went. Look, Vic, if you expect me to play I Spy on your wife... I know how you feel about this kind of a case, but I wouldn't ask you to touch it if I... I I've got the feeling Grace got herself involved in something she can't handle. You feel there's another man in the picture? I'll lay eight to five. You think you can find out his name, what he does for a living? Now, judging by those checks, I'd say he's promoting Grace. If he is, it's my fault. Now, let's not be noble. I mean it. What kind of a life is it for a girl to be married to a gambler? To me traipsing all over the country, no wonder she got lonely. Well, assuming I find this man, what do you intend to do about it? It all depends. If he's the right guy... How could he be? And take money from your wife. Maybe he's in a jam. Happens now and then. <laughs> You're a strange bird, Vic. I'm no kid, Mike. I've been around. Maybe I was wrong getting married in my racket. But I did. And anything Grace wants, she can have. If she wants this guy... She can have him, too. <laughs> With six points. I think get to work on it like a good boy. Just let me know the score. Taxi. Hey, taxi. Take me to... Uh, wait a minute. Hey, you. Me? Yeah. Why don't we share the cab and save some dough? <laughs> How's that again? Well, aren't you tailing me? And if I was, Johnny, I wasn't doing too good a job. And I thought the Falcon was the best in the business. I thought so, too. Obviously, we were both wrong. Obviously. You working for Vic Burton? Would it do me any good to deny it? Not a bit. But you can tell your client his troubles are all over. I'm giving Grace back to him. Well, that's nice of you. Well, that's the sort of guy I am. Yeah, from here on in, he's got nothing to worry about. Of course, it cost him a few pennies, but think of the lesson he learned. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you know, Johnny, I've got a hunch you've got yours to learn yet. Take care of yourself, fella. Wish I had time to. Come. Hello, Mr. King. Uh, what are you doing here, Billy? I, uh, hear you checking out. Oh, where'd you hear that from? Desk clerk? Mistaken. Oh, I'm sure glad to hear that, Johnny. Johnny, are yeah, you this friendly with all the guests? Are you this friendly with all the bellhops? <laughs> Billy, you're wasting your time here. Boy like you could really go places. I like it here. I was wondering... Hey, hey, beat it. You expecting company? Oh, no, I said beat it. Just as you say, Mr. King. John. Hello, Mrs. Burton. Oh, hello, Billy. You sure I can't do anything else for you, Mr. King? No, you've done enough already. Well, you know me, always glad to be of service. If you need anything, yell. Darling, I'm sorry I broke in on you. It wasn't smart, Grace. I couldn't help myself. You've got to take me away. Why? What's up? Vic's gone to Mike Waring. So I discovered. You know? Yeah, I ran into him this morning. Well, you can't say that my timing is bad. I had a feeling the party was over. You're joking. Look, Grace, it's time you open those beautiful blue eyes to the facts of life. I'm not a very nice guy. But Johnny, I... No, it's true. You see, honey, I got only one talent, if you can call it that. I'm a pretty fair-looking boy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not conceited about it. It's my stock and trade. Now it's time to move the shop to another spot. No. No, I won't let you go. Now, let's not be silly. I mean it, Johnny. I won't let you. I'll kill you first. Now, you wouldn't do that, would you? <laughs> you were just talking to hear yourself talk. Isn't that right? Oh, Johnny. Johnny, don't leave me. I'm sorry, baby. But it was nice while it lasted. Uh, this is Mr. King in 912. Billy Matthews around there? Uh, I'll have to check the bell, Captain. Will you hold on? Yeah, I'll hurry it up, will you? Lover, when you're near me... Uh, Mr. King. Me. Yeah? I'm afraid he's busy. Will one of the other bellhops do? No, no, I want him. Look, as soon as you locate him, tell him to... Call... Oh! oh! Mr. King! Hello, Mike. Well, if it isn't Sergeant Corbin. Well, don't tell me I wasn't expecting it. Well, you were overdue. Haven't seen you in a week. Sit down. What's the point? Only be getting up again. You know of Vic Burton? Yeah, I just finished a little job for him. Did said job entail getting the lowdown on the late Johnny King? What do you mean, the late Johnny King? Well, what do people generally mean when they say the late? He's dead. He was gunned an hour ago. And you think... I think the job you did for Vic Burton supplied the motive. You're a real helpful kid, Mike. Isn't it a crime all your good deeds turn out to be murder? Two hours have passed since Mike Waring's client was nominated by the police as chief suspect for the murder of Johnny King. Now at headquarters, we find Vic Burton declining the honor with little thanks. What are you trying to do, frame me? Well, it won't work. I never even heard of this Johnny King. No, it won't wash, Vic. Corbett knows I tailed him for you. Thanks. Maybe I can do something for you someday. Don't be a chump, Burton. He had to tell us. Well, the whole thing's ridiculous. I never used a gun in my life. I wouldn't know how. I believe they include directions in every package. All you got to do is follow them. You're crazy. You knew King was romancing your wife. It's a lie. They were just friends. Well, his friendship came pretty high. I understand it cost you 18 grand. I tell you, I didn't kill him. No, you hired a pro to do the job. How do you know that, Corbett? A bellboy at the hotel named Billy Matthews spotted him. About 10 minutes before the shooting, he saw some character wearing a raincoat and carrying an umbrella get off at King's floor. He thought it was queer. What's so queer about that? It wasn't raining. Oh. And on the basis of that, you're ready to book Burton? Why, you got a better suspect? Sure, I can think of a dozen. Did you talk to his wife? Well, you feel she could have been responsible? You're out of your mind. Where's her motive? Well, suppose she was in love with this King character. Now, oh, you're barking up the wrong tree, Corbett. If she was in love with him, she certainly wouldn't have had him killed. Unless, uh... Well? I just thought of something. Wait a minute, Mike. Keep away from Grace. Now, you're asking the impossible, Vic. Those are orders. If you can't follow them, you're fired. 
Well, I always wanted to go into business for myself. I'll be seeing you, fellas. Hello, Mrs. Burton. Who are you? Mike Waring. Oh? I take it Vic mentioned my name. May I come in? Yes, please. Thank you. Sit down, won't you? Did you see Vic? Yes, not more than ten minutes ago. He's in a bad spot, Angel. He didn't kill Johnny. There was only one way to convince the police. Oh. Give him a better suspect. You got any nominations? No. Uh, you wouldn't care to volunteer for the post yourself. What? Well, you were in love with Johnny. I don't deny that. Suppose he packed you in. Why should he? He did it to other women. You're lying. Oh, you mean you didn't know? What was there to know? That's not true. You going to stick to that story? Why shouldn't I? Because if I can disprove it, it's going to look awful sad for you. Get out of here. Look, Grace, I'm not enjoying this any more than you are. But unless I can dig up another suspect, Vic is going to fry. No. Yes. Now, do you think he killed Johnny? No. Well, then who does that leave? I thought you were the detective. Well, thanks for reminding me. I'll get busy on it right away. Boy. Uh, excuse me, you Billy Matthews? Yeah, that's right. I'm uh, glad to know you. I'm Mike Waring. Who? Mike Waring. You're not the one they call the Falcon. Yeah, but don't breathe it to a soul. Gee, this is a real pleasure, Mr. Waring. You working on a Johnny King murder? Mm-hmm. Where can we talk? Well, I'm on duty now. Oh, well, can't you knock off for five minutes? It's worth a fin. If, uh... Well, uh... Go on, take it. Oh, I don't want you to think I was holding you up. Oh, never entered my mind. Where can we go? Uh, there's a place behind the elevator. Uh, hey, Norris, uh, take over my station, will you? I have to help this gentleman here. How does this suit you? Oh, this is fine. Uh, smoke? Thanks. I uh, can't tell you what a bang I'm getting out of this. I always wanted to be a private dick myself. Uh, well, forget it. I got a feeling what with tips and jips, you do better here. Yeah, but it must be exciting. No, most of the time it's real dull. How well did you know Mr. King? Well enough. He was a big sport. Heavy tipper, huh? You betcha. How did he meet Grace Burton? Uh, I couldn't say. Uh... I got 20 bucks that says you're too modest. Well... 20 uh... bucks, Billy. That's not to be sneezed at even by a bellhop. <laughs> it was all my fault. Come again? Uh, when he first registered here, he saw Mrs. Burton. He told me he thought he knew her from someplace. I guess I let him pump me. <laughs> it's hard to believe. Huh? You're a shrewdy, Billy. I can't see Johnny getting anything out of you that you didn't want to give. How much did he pay you? Oh, now, you've got to understand, Mr. Waring. We bellboys don't do as well as you think. i got to supply my own uniform. Yeah, and you've got a widowed mother in Flatbush to support. I know. Johnny see much of Grace Burton? Practically every day. He really went for her. She was nuts about him. They ever fight? Not that I know of. You sure? Positive. About an hour before he was bumped, I saw them together, and they were real lovey-dovey. Yeah. Well, that kind of knocks my hunch in the head. Huh? Skip it. Listen, Billy, uh, here's my card. Uh -huh. Now, if you think of anything else, lift the phone, huh? Yeah, sure will. It was very interesting seeing you operate. Yeah, I told you it was real dull. Well, I don't know, Mr. Waring. You gave me a couple of ideas. Maybe someday they'll come in handy. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Burton. I didn't call for a bellboy. I know. I just dropped by to let you know all the fellas think it's a shame about your husband. Oh, well, thank them for me, Billy. I sure will. Oh, the cops are nuts. Mr. Burton wouldn't hurt a fly. Why, well, he never even said two words to Mr. King. Did you tell that to the police? What do you take me for, a blabbermouth? If I wanted to talk, I could tell plenty. Me and Johnny got Johnny. along. Johnny? Yeah. Didn't you know we were real close? How do you think he found out about you? How? I got him the dope. You ought to keep your drawers locked. Oh, you little sneak. I wouldn't try that again, Mrs. Now, B. get out of here. If I do, I go straight to Mike Waring. Suppose I told him you and Mr. King had a beef. What? I heard you threaten to kill him when he sloughed you off. You're lying. You know better. I was parked right outside his door. Of course, I could always have amnesia, but that'll cost you real dough. What do you call real dough, Billy? Five grand? Don't be a fool. I haven't got that kind of money. Are you kidding? You and your husband have a joint checking account at the Federal Trust. 
You don't miss a trick, do you? No, not a one. So start writing. And since you might have trouble spelling my name, just make it payable to cash. <laughs> Homicide, Corbett. Hi, Sergeant. Who's this? Now, who else would it be? Oh, I was afraid of that. Did you see Mrs. Burton? Yep. What'd you find out? Nothing. I told you you were wasting your time. Yeah, well, I'm more convinced than ever that Vic didn't kill Johnny King. I'd like to see a little proof. Well, there must be something in King's past that supplies the motive. Oh, you're reaching, pal. Well, it figures that in his lifetime he must have offended many a husband. And you think one of them finally caught up with him while he was messing with Grace Burton? I do. <laughs> How convenient. Well, does it hurt to check? You tell me how. He had no record. What did you find in his room? You want a complete inventory? Yes. Eight custom-tailored suits, four pairs of shoes, 19 shirts, oh, no. six in the monogram. No, no, no. Never mind that. Did he keep a diary? There wasn't a scrap of paper in the joint. Well, I don't get a... Hold it, Sergeant. I've got company. Yes, come in. Listen, Mike, if you're all through... Well, I'm not. I'll be with you in just... Oh. Hello, Mike. Hey, what's going on there? Hello. Hello. Fifteen minutes ago, Mike's phone call to Sergeant Corbett was interrupted by a shot whereupon the good sergeant hustled over and discovered the reason for the disconnect. Oh. All right, Mike, here, take a swig of this. No. You must be hurt real bad to turn this down. It's bonded. Uh -huh. Oh, Corbett. Why don't you ask me what happened? I don't have to. I was here. Oh. Oh, who taped my ribs? Me. You made it too tight. Oh, that's gratitude for you. Uh, did you get a look at the party? No, I didn't have a chance. wonder what he had against you. Not that I can't think of a dozen reasons. Uh, so can I. Must be getting close to the truth. From what you told me, you aren't getting close to anything. Uh, well, this proves Vic Burton couldn't have killed King. Does it? Well, it figures the same one who killed Johnny shot me. So? So Vic's in stir, isn't he? Aren't you forgetting the queer duck in the raincoat the bellboy saw? You think Vic sent him around to knock me off? Why should he? To unsuspicion himself. Oh, you're out of your mind. Well, then who do you think was responsible? I have no idea, but if you'll help me into my coat, we'll see Grace Burton. Maybe she'll provide a little inspiration. Hello, Mrs. Burton. Are you back again, Billy? Oh, that's no way to talk. I'm up here to do you a favor. Don't bother. Well, if that's the way you feel. No, wait a minute. What is it? If I was you, I'd be real careful when I use a phone. They got a bug on it. A bug? It's tapped. You think your friend Mike Waring is responsible. What'd you tell him anyway? None of your business. Now, look, I can't protect you if I don't know. I'm only... You expecting someone? No. Well, uh, thanks again, Mrs. Burton. If you want the papers, please let me know. Hello, Billy. Oh, Mr. Waring, I was just on my way out. Uh, stick around. We're going to have a ball. Oh, but i got to get back to work. It'll keep. What's the meaning of this? Uh, you know Sergeant Corbett? Sure she does. I still would like well, to know. Well, Corbett and I thought you might be interested in the latest developments. An hour ago, someone took a shot at me. Oh, obviously. They missed. No, I make a real neat bandage. Uh, well, anyway, it came from the same gun that killed Johnny King. Well, then that proves that Vic didn't do it. That's what I claim. But Corbett here is still holding out for the queer little duck in the raincoat. The one I saw? Yeah, uh, tell me some more about him, Billy. Nothing more to tell. He was about five, three, or four, kind of chubby. Mm -hmm. well, why didn't you question him when you saw him loitering in the hall? Oh, I thought maybe he was a guest in a hotel. Uh, and, of course, you wouldn't risk offending. Look, I gotta get back to work. Now, what's I'm... your hurry? You always said you wanted to see how a detective operates. Well, that's on, kid. I'm operating. Now, what do we know for sure? Party named Johnny King was murdered, so the first question is... Who done it? I say Vic Burton. I say you're wrong. What was his motive? Revenge. That's not true. I'm inclined to agree with you, Grace. Want to make it unanimous, Billine? I wasn't paying attention. Well, you should. We're going to ask questions later. I submit the motive was money. What are you talking about? You gave me a list of the stuff you found in Johnny's room. What happened to the 18 grand Grace turned over to him? Well, you must have banked it. And why didn't you find the passbook? Huh? No, a guy like Johnny would keep that money on him for a fast getaway. Right, Billine? How should I know? Well, you should, if anyone would. You killed him. Well, you're nuts. I swear in a Bible. I'll and save it not... for court. 
All right, Corbett, what are you standing there with your mouth open for? Close it and make like a cop. What's the matter, Sergeant? You don't look happy. Oh, I ain't. When I think how that Billy Matthews had me fooled. Yeah, well, he was a real cutie. Imagine holding me up for 25 bucks and him with 18 grand stashed away. Oh, 23. Hmm? You're forgetting the five he got shaken down Mrs. Burton. Oh, yeah. Well, Billy believed in making the most of his opportunities. As soon as he discovered King was checking out, he figured it was time to act. He knew no one would notice a bellboy around the hotel, so he went up to Johnny's room and let him have it. And the queer-looking duck in the rain color. That was a figment of his imagination. <laughs> you know, I could almost overlook his killing Johnny, but there's one thing I can't forgive him for. What's that? Taking that shot at you. Oh, why, Sergeant, I never dreamed you cared. I don't. I'm just sorry he missed. Oh. Good night, Mike. The Case of the Falling Star. The Case of the Falling Star, that's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that some heavenly bodies can wind up six feet under. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking.